Hi, this is David at MASH IT. With our recent Alienware X17 review and all the benchmarks we completed, we noticed that the performance of the 140 watt 3070 and a new 11800H Intel CPU was actually quite lackluster, especially considering the great new thermals. This led me to believe that there was another factor at play here. Now this laptop with a 165Hz panel doesn't have a MUX switch, so yes that will also limit the score a little bit, but I've benchmarked plenty of Optimus laptops in the past without encountering such a severe impact on performance. Now when I opened the laptop, I instantly noticed that this laptop had two sticks of 8GB of high density RAM. As I'm sure most of you by now will be aware, this really impacts the performance on Ryzen laptops. I didn't think it would have such a profound effect on an Intel machine. So fortunately I had a 32GB kit of 3200MHz low density RAM in the office. Installing the RAM was very easy. You just remove eight screws from the base place, most of which are captive. The front left and the front right screws also separate the base plate enough to allow you to pry the panel from the chassis with either a pry tool or your fingernails. Before you start work on the laptop, make sure you disconnect the battery. Now the RAM is readily accessible. Release the metal arms on either side of the memory stick and gently slide the old chips out. And make sure when you install your new RAM modules, you insert them in the correct orientation and at a slight angle pressing down so that when the RAM is seated, the metal arms clip in place. I've put a link in the description for the crucial low density RAM modules with decent timings as I've used. And here is the offending high density RAM module, the 1RX16. Notice the RAM chips are on just one side of the DIMM. So with the new RAM installed, I've completed the CPU benchmarks again, and I'm showing the CPU results side by side. I was surprised to see such a big improvement in the CPU portions of the tests. And the new results are actually what we should be seeing from 140 watt 3070 and these new 11800H CPUs. The Geekbench 5 showed a nice CPU single core and multi core improvement. And also, the Times by CPU score was 17% higher. This also makes a big difference in our game benchmarks, with Shadow of the Tomb Raider receiving a 27.3% FPS performance improvement with Warhammer Total War benchmark receiving a 21.4% improvement. So to summarize the performance, I have placed them in a graph to make it easier to break it down. But the average in all these benchmarks is 17.5% improvement on these CPU bound tests. This is an incredible difference and what I was expected to receive out of the box from a flagship Alienware product. Now if you're about to place an order and you do not wish to do the RAM upgrade yourself, Dell are also offering high-speed XMP RAM options. And although we haven't tested this yet, I'm sure this will have a similar improvement to the RAM that we have installed. Also, so far we've only had a single X17 laptop in the office, and ours was the 16GB configuration. So I do not know if all laptops will be affected, but I'd appreciate if anyone else with an X17 could also let us know what type of RAM they have received. We do have a 32GB model arriving later this week, so we'll be checking that and to see if that is high or low density RAM. So in conclusion, exchanging our high density RAM for low density kit gave us the performance we would expect from these premium laptops. My only question to Dell would be, why are you supplying known slow RAM with your flagship laptops? Please let us know your thoughts in this matter in the comment sections below. And as always, thank you for watching.